Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. <clears throat> My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is swine technologies. And on today's call, we are joined by BJ Brugman, co-founder and CEO of Distinct. Distinct is an ag tech startup based in Ames, Iowa. And their solution enables precision livestock farming and remote monitoring of swine production facilities. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to today's call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Distinct's market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Distinct may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few moments to answer that poll question. Finally, a few process comments while the poll is running. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time. We will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. An alternate way of asking questions is you can raise your hand and I'd be happy to unmute you and you can ask BJ a question directly. That's oftentimes the most efficient, but also feel free to use the Q&A box as well. Finally, the webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I'm pleased to introduce BJ Brugman, co-founder and CEO of Distinct. Thanks for joining us, BJ. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Uh, yeah, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to kind of go through what Distinct is working on and, and our, our vision for precision livestock farming. I, I kind of talked today about just uh, first giving giving you guys an overview of Distinct and 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 what we're building, what we're what we're delivering to producers, uh, livestock producers specifically. I want to give an overview of the Maya principle, which stands for the most advanced yet acceptable uh, solution to innovation, and just kind of how that informs innovation that we think about, you know, specifically at at Distinct, but also for the swine industry. I'll give some examples of, of how we failed, you know, as, as a company, when we weren't deploying that kind of mindset, when we weren't de deploying the Maya principle and how we evolved. And ultimately, I'll kind of talk about how we've leveraged, leveraged this mindset and, and how we've used that to gain traction uh, for our solution in the marketplace. So I want to start first, as I mentioned, kind of giving you an overview of our solution. And, and really, it's rooted in this problem. And, and if you're familiar with swine production, this will probably be a pretty a pretty familiar image. So, you know, what I always describe it is what, what is going on in this in these swine facilities. Pigs are going to show up and they're going to live their life five to six months in this finishing barn. And there are so many pieces of information and so many components, you know, people or inputs uh, that are coming and going from this barn. So these pigs are going to show up via this live haul truck driver. There's information on that ticket that shows up with that trucker, where those pigs came from, what's the health status, what do they weigh? good information that's that's really, really important for us to know, but it just lives on a paper record and sits in the barn. And the barn worker, the person responsible for caring for these pigs every day, they document things like biosecurity, who's coming and going to the facility, what's the barn environment like, temperature, humidity, water consumption, they document treatments, vaccinations, all this information uh, is, is, is really valuable and it's just sitting on a clipboard uh, and, and data that lives in the barn. Feed truck delivering feed constantly, right? These pigs are gonna each eat 600 pounds of feed or so in their life. So we've got a lot of feed coming and valuable information on that feed ticket. You know, veterinarians responsible for the overall health of the herd and, and the care of these specific animals, you know, trying to understand what's going on with mortality, what's going on with medication use. And really the hard piece here is the only way to know is if you're physically present at the site. The only way to know this is if you're actually on site and you have service managers, you know, responsible for maintenance, responsible for disease management, trying to deliver pigs to market as their primary responsibility. And, and, and what we found is the problem for the industry is no real way to know what's going on in this barn unless you're physically present. And, and so that led us to our solution at Distinct. So what we do first and foremost is start to just enable some visibility to those barns, start to pick off the lowest hanging fruit. So we are a sensor platform for confined livestock. And, 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 and 
from a platform standpoint, we think it, the critical component of that is first establishing connectivity at these sites. So what we found is 90 to 95% of the swine production facility, facilities in the United States today do not have access to network connectivity. Distinct brings that with a single, single source connectivity, a network enabled PLC gateway. From there, we can deploy and connect any IoT device that we want to start to answer some of these basic questions of what's going on in the barn, starting to inform the enterprise of what's happening at that facility without actually having to be present. Our solution is completely hardware agnostic, so we don't manufacture any devices. And that allows us to select really, really affordable devices and, and devices that, that are able to then answer the specific questions that producers have in that facility without waiting for, for technology to be developed in, in most cases. And then ultimately we consolidate all that information into a real-time dashboard so that various levels of the organization can see information that's relevant to their role. So veterinarians can see data or, or in, insights that are relevant to them. The feed mill can see information relevant to their role and, and so on and so on. So that, that's kind of an overview of what Distinct is. Software platform feeding in IoT sensor data and first establishing connectivity at the site in order to enable us to do that. And so I, I wanted to talk about though, in, in I, you know, knowing the background of what Distinct is building, I just wanted to talk about you know, the theme of this being innovation and innovation in the swine industry specifically. I just wanted to talk some about just kind of the mindset I think that, 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 uh, that we've taken as, as we think about innovating and bringing, and bringing more advanced solutions to the swine industry. So. I talk about the Maya principle. I, I didn't even know this was a thing until a few months ago. I heard it from one of my friends who's a, a consulting a consulting firm uh, called Paython uh, based in Indiana. And, and they wrote a blog post about it and that kind of turned me on to it. But the, the, the Maya principle stands for the most advanced yet acceptable solution. As you think about innovation and, and bringing new products to an industry, this was a phrase that was coined by Raymond Lowy and then who was later then dubbed the, the father of industrial design, worked on, on incredible projects, a uh, list of brands here that uh, obviously you're familiar with, a couple of them, uh, agricultural brands with International Har Harvester and Alice Chalmers, you know, being in there. And the thing that, that, that Raymond Lowy thought about with design was, was thinking about, you know, designing for the future, but delivering that future gradually. And, 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 you know, he would say that, that consumers demand innovation, but they don't want it all at one time. Your market wants innovation, but they don't want it all at once. And, and, and the perfect example of that, and, and I'm sure one that's overused, uh, is just thinking about Apple and thinking about the evolution of the iPhone. And, and we think about, you know, the, 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 the Apple, the generation one iPod is, is over here. And I don't even know what generation iPhone that is that one looks actually pretty old it's probably like generation one or two of, of the iPhone but but what Apple thought and, and how they deployed this Maya principle in real life was they they saw the need right we, we were carrying all of these things in our pocket we were carrying a phone uh, we're carrying the internet we're carrying a calculator we're carrying a camera we're carrying music all of this is clunky it's it's physical things that are in our pocket and, and Apple probably could have delivered that all, all in one device. They, they probably saw like, hey, we could deliver this in, in the iPhone. Like that's what, that's what, that's what the consumer wants. Uh, but, but when they thought about it through the Maya, Maya principle, what's the most advanced yet acceptable solution? Backed all the way up and said, what's the most basic thing? Like what is the thing that the, that the consumer wants the most? And they started with music. And they said, you know, music in the pocket is, is our segue to other things, to replacing other things that take up space in the pocket. So just thinking about the Maya concept and principle is designing for the future, right? The, the generation one iPod was designed for the future, but they're thinking about delivering that future gradually and in increments to the customer base. And so I, again, kind of going further on this is think, thinking about, you know, the customer mindset here and, and thinking about it in our own lives, not just the lives of you know, Apple and, and the iPod and iPhone designers, but thinking about, you know, what Raymond Lowy said around customers look forward to new things, but they have a fear of anything totally new, you know? And so the, the examples here, these are, I mean, trying to just connect this to real life. I, I think about, you know, restaurants, there's a restaurant across the road from our office. And earlier this summer, you know, I was, I go in there once a week because it's so, 
and the food's really good. And, and I always have the same sandwich when I go in there and then earlier this summer, you know, they, I, they hadn't changed the menu since Christmas. And so I'm kind of saying to myself, like, gosh, it'd be nice if they'd like change the menu a little bit It'd nice if they'd update, you know, maybe a side item at least, or maybe a dessert item, like it just change it slightly. And I went in there and, and went to order my same sandwich. I look at the menu and the menu is totally different. The menu had totally evolved. I, I wanted slight change. I wanted waffle fries instead of sweet potato fries, but they changed the whole menu. They took away my sandwich. And, and, and that wasn't what I, you know, that, that disrupted me. That was something totally new. And, and it forced me to change dramatically when I didn't really want to. I think it also applies to jobs. I mean, I think we're seeing it now too in, in kind of this, whether the, the great resignation or the great retirement, but, you know, people thinking about this, just almost romanticizing about what life would be like in a different job or what life would be like in a different role. And I think people think about, you know, maybe it would be nice to work on the other side of town, or maybe it would be nice to take a different commute, or maybe it would be nice to, you know, work in a different segment of the industry. But ultimately, I think what keeps people in jobs, and particularly keeps people in jobs that they don't like, is the fear of anything totally new. You know, maybe I want a new commute, but maybe I don't want a new commute in a new city. You know, so I think there's things about this customer mindset as we think, how, how do we deliver these kind of things incrementally and avoid, avoid you know, where we get to that spot where we've totally shaken that customer thinking about having a, a fear of anything totally new. And as this, as this specifically, you know, applies to, to swine, you know, the, the, the major swine event, the major swine conference is the World Pork Expo that's held every summer in, in Des Moines. And, and there's several other conferences, of course, that happen throughout the year, but a lot of them, you know, the, the main, the main one is the world pork expo and the world pork expo is really an event where people come to look for new things. They look at new things. They want to see new things. They touch new things. They talk about the new things. And, and, and I think kind of the, 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 the outcome of that is what I would say is what made it home, what actually made it into the barn immediately after that after you left the World Pork Expo, what was implementable, implementable on the farm right now versus something, you know, that was futuristic where you, you just, it was something too new that the, that the consumer couldn't actually grab a hold of. And so as I think about, again, going back to distinct, how do we apply this Maya principle? How do we think about designing and delivering innovation for the swine industry? I think we have to ask ourselves as what is the generation iPod one equivalent for swine producers, what not what is the iPhone, not what is everything that has to be you know consolidated into one spot, but what are those generation one iPod questions that we can start to pick off? And now that we have connectivity on the site, right? We've got sites connected to the internet. We've got a completely hardware agnostic platform, so we can ask these sites any question that we want because the hardware already exists. So you say, what what are those generation one questions? You know, from a feed standpoint, feed, water, and air are three most critical components to raising a pig. When you think about feed, is, is feed even present? You know, we could get very specific. There's technology that exists to say there are exactly this many pounds of feed in the bin. But is that a generation one iPod question? Or is the generation one iPod question, is feed even present? You know, water consumption, we can, we can start to analyze that. And, and we know that water consumption is an indicator of disease presence. But maybe the generation one question is, is water even flowing? And, and, and without distinct, the only way to know that today is if you're physically present on the site. Would a generation one question be, is water present and can I see that on my, on my phone or on, on my computer when I'm not there at the site? You know, airflow is a big thing. We, we spend a lot of time talking about you know, optimizing ventilation, but is the generation one question, is the power even on? Are the fans even running? So that's how we think about, you know, innovation for us and, 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 and trying to deploy innovation gradually for, for the U.S. swine producer. So here's a couple of examples of how, how we actually failed doing this early, early on in, in the days of, of Distinct. You know, what we built initially before we were thinking about the Maya principle, you know, we built using some AI and computer vision technology, built a system that would identify and count identifying count pigs using an off-the-shelf camera and we thought it was the the sexiest thing in the world we thought it was so neat you know love drunk on our own product took that out to a few customers and they said yeah that's really cool that'd be really neat except for the fact that i don't have internet in my barns don't have internet so not only can i not connect your device i can't connect any device 
And so what we created then was the aha was, okay, well, we'll create this standalone cellular connectivity device that allows our device to be connected and any other devices that you bring to that, to that barn now or in the future. And you'd have thought, okay, well, guys, you probably learned your lesson. You know, that was, that was, that was a pretty good example where you should take what the customer was sell, telling you and, and figure it out. Well, we didn't quite learn it yet. You know, we, we, we made the mistake again where we overshot the market. You know, what we thought customers were needing was, you know, they were worried about biosecurity. And so they were, they were wondering who specifically is coming to this farm. I want to know the name. I want to know where they were before and who specifically uh, has come in, is coming to this farm. So we started integrating some facial recognition technology. We already had this camera technology. We started integrating, integrating this, this facial recognition technology to tell our customers, the producers, who was entering this facility. And upon further review and further discussion, we found out that they didn't even know if someone was there at all. We didn't even, we, they, they, didn't, they didn't know if someone had opened that door and physically done chores that day, let alone knowing who it was or what time, we, what time they were there. And so what we created then was a simple reporting system to track when the doors were open and, and simply for how long the person remained at the site. So if you think about large integrated swine producers in the United States, sites spread all across the country, five, six, seven, 800 sites, huge geographies, just knowing was someone there today is incredibly valuable. Just knowing was someone there to care for the pigs today versus that, I, that iPhone solution, which is who is there, what's their height and weight, what's their birthday, you know, knowing everything, every single thing about them, it, it would be important. But today, just knowing someone was there is, is the most important and really the, the Maya solution. I wanted to show you how that looks. So how that looks you know, we, we ended up creating a really simple report for, for confirming to these producers that people were present at those barns, that people visited those barns. This is just an example uh, of one site. And so the green, the, green, the, the green icons would be a normal visit, a, you know, parameters set by this enterprise. The red icon would be an out of compliance visit outside of normal working hours. And so it's just a really simple thing where we added a door switch to the, to the, to the front door of the barn, just signaling was the, was the door opened, was someone present on that site. And, and, and what we found from this, just this really simple solution, is it allowed us and the producer to just ask better questions. So for example, what happened on the sixth? Why were there three out of working hour visits on the sixth? Without this door data, you wouldn't otherwise be able to ask that question. What happened on the 11th? Why were you, or on the 13th, excuse me, why were you there 11 times? Again, really awesome, really awesome, a basic data that allows us to ask a better question of that facility. And as you can see, no visit on the 19th or 20th. What was going on there? Did someone else do chores? Did you skip doing chores? Did you show up four times on the 21st because you didn't do chores over the weekend? allows the producer to ask better questions. And I think about that kind of in this concept, you know, Raymond Lowy talks about deliver, deliver innovation that's familiar yet innovative. And so I think about that as like, you know, all we were adding was a door sensor that, that dings the bell, right? On, on the computer or, or on our phone uh, to send us an alert that someone was there. You know, this, it's, it's like the shopkeeper's bell. You know, I think about my, the, the Royal Cafe back home where I grew up, this bell was on the door and Carol works in the back making food, but she also works in the front taking orders. And if Carol's in the back and she hears this door, the, the bell ring, she doesn't know who came in. She doesn't know how many people came in, but she does know someone needs her attention. And that's the same concept that we're applying here. We don't know who came in on the 13th, but they came in 11 times. Someone needs our attention. Just allows us to direct, direct our attention and direct the resources of the enterprise more much much more efficiently so again just thinking about kind of summarizing the maya principle you know designing for the future but delivering that future gradually you know our, our conversations with with producers you know the lessons we've learned in this is thinking does the industry need facial recognition or does the industry need a door switch and as we think about deploying precision technology what is the most advanced yet acceptable solution today we don't even see that door open. A door switch is pretty as a pretty big advancement just to be able to see that door open. Do we need to know precise bin feed bin levels, or do we just simply want to know is feed there, is feed present? 
and Distinct is able to answer that today. We can tell, we can tell across an enterprise where feed is present. Do we need an advanced solution like cough detection or do we just need to see real-time water consumption? Today, Distinct can deliver real-time water consumption information. We know water consumption is an indicator of health and an indicator of disease presence. So let's start with something that's really, really simple. Think about that generation one iPod. And ultimately that, that, that has gotten us back to our solution, which is you know, first establishing connectivity. That, that is the, the, the music in your pocket. The step one, the generation one was just replacing music in your pocket. And, and thinking you know, before that, everything was physical. You needed a physical disc or you needed a physical tape. And the same is true for the swine industry. You had to physically be present at these sites to understand what was going on, to see if the power was on, to see what the temperature was, to see if water was running. Now that you have connectivity and a platform for connecting uh, hardware agnostic devices, we're able to monitor, monitor these facilities remotely and across a huge geography. And again, ultimately that data is able to be consolidated into a real-time dashboard, dashboard where people can see that uh, information you know, that's relevant uh, to their own roles. So I, I kind of in summary, I'm just thinking about, you know, obviously explaining the distinct solution, but I, I think the mindset of innovation, you know, for the swine industry or, or, and all livestock producers really applies here is, is, is it, when you approach innovation through this, this, this Maya mindset, you really uncover the most basic customer needs. You know, we, we got into a lot of those discussions early on and we thought they were fun, frankly, where we would, we, we would iterate with customers and, and ultimately go to the moon and try to think about all the neat things we could do with sensor technology now that we had connectivity. And ultimately, I think we just, we, we, we learned through the Maya principle, slow down, answer the most basic needs and start to build from there as technology evolves or as the customer's appetite for technology improves. Ultimately, I think that improves the speed of addressing the, the today's needs of, of life, livestock producers at scale, starting small versus you know go, trying to go to the moon. Ultimately, if we go slower initially, I think we can go faster in the long run. And I think the Maya, the Maya approach and the Maya mindset, you know, ultimately and it, it differentiates distinct. You know, I think we've gotten really good at helping producers understand and think through what is that generation one iPod question of your facility? And sometimes that's different uh, across different enterprises, but ultimately that, that brings us back to distinct and, and how the precision technology journey starts with distinct. And, and I think keeps pushing producers around this mindset, think simply, let's start answering the basics, the basics of these facilities. And that's possible you know, now because we have connectivity at the sites. Any questions? I, I think there was a question that came in. Happy to happy to jump on and answer some of that. Yeah, sure. Thanks, BJ. Thanks for the great presentation. I love the Maya principle. Well done. So now we have some time for some questions here. As I mentioned, there are a couple of ways to do it. Looks like Mike K was the first to raise his hand. Mike, I'm going to let you ask the question directly if you'd like. Unmute you here, and you can ask BJ directly. Hi, PJ. It's Mike Knezovich. I'm a partner at uh, New Harbor Venture Partners. As with all technology like this, when we go out and raise capital for companies in the ag space, VCs always ask, or eventually always ask the same question, what kind of ROIs are you delivering to producers? Yeah, good question. Good question. And so I, you know, I think it probably it it somewhat depends on on what 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 is your biggest question of, of the operation. And so, you know, the 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 cool thing about our platform being completely agnostic is we we work with individual producers to answer individual questions based on what's most important for their organization. So a couple examples. What what does that look like? Well, you know, one example would be a manure pit monitoring. Uh, which doesn't sound like it sounds like actually like the least sexy that you could possibly think of sure. um, when you think about sensor deployment. But like the the easy ROI, you know, calculation on that was one particular operation we were working with was sending sending a person around to to nearly 200 sites, measuring manure pit levels with a broken broom handle once a week, collecting sticky notes, consolidating all this data into us, you know, delivering this back to the office 
it's taking this, uh, you know, this information across four yeah. different people, hand keying it in, submitting information to the state, right? That was easily addressable with uh, with a hundred and thirty dollar sensor, you know. So thinking about those like labor wow. savings, of course, those wow. are massive, right? That's a massive opportunity. You know, a, a really big one obviously sits around feed. You know, feed is seventy percent of the cost of raising a pig, and one of the things I think the indus- industry has just accepted is the fact that pigs run out of but just logistically it's crazy that we're still at that point where you know pigs run out of feed but every time a pig runs out of feed they're not eating and and if they're not eating they're not gaining and we sell pounds right we sell carcass and so if 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 and and usually on a fixed time basis like when the plant calls for those pigs they have to go and so it's not like you can just let them sit in the barn extra few days right you're moving those pigs out and so, you know, one of the, the uh, big ROI that we would provide too is, is monitoring those feed bins, understanding is feed present. And, and we've actually allowed us, you know, when we think about the Maya principle, started simple, just is feed present. And if feed is not present, you know, we saw those scenarios, right? The bins are out of feed, the pigs are not eating. That producer then asked, well, then you got to tell me if I'm almost out, you know? So we added an, another sensor yeah. to where yeah. we're about 25% left. And so, you know, I think it, it varies, right? It depends on who you talk to. But, you know, I think, I think it's generally accepted that today those pigs are going to, without distinct, they're going to run out of feed three to four times in that six month cycle. And every time they do, that's a day, right, that they're not eating. And, you know, a pound is probably what, 80, 85 cents a pound right now. So pretty good ROI, thinking about deploying a couple hundred dollars worth of sensors on, on a barn full of five to 10,000 pigs. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, long answer. I, Good. No, it's great. So it's probably a simple question. Yeah. Yep. Great. Thanks, Mike. It looks like Juan M has a question as well. Um, Juan asks a basic question on connectivity. Is 5G needed for this to work or how is coverage achieved in more remote areas? Yeah, 5, 5G is not needed. It probably does some pretty cool things. I think eventually, you know, as we think about more advanced solutions that come and trying to think about, you know, more you know, more complex data that's being transmitted. So we use the cellular network for our connectivity today. And everyone, the, your first thought on cellular network is everyone thinks about their cell phone and dropping phone calls. Our, our gateway has quite a bit higher, a higher powered radio in the device itself. And then we boost all those, all of those gateways with an external directional antenna. The antenna is like a hundred bucks. And, and so far, you know, we don't, we don't get anybody's good site. Like we don't get the site that's right outside of town. We get the sites that are in pretty tough spots and so far haven't been stumped with connectivity. Great. I'll just give another moment for any more questions to trickle in, but BJ, one, one I like to ask to end it on or, or um, close to end it on is how can the folks, <clears throat> the folks here listening today help you out and those listening retroactively in the days to come, how can they help distinct out? And yeah, they, I, I how mean, how can I, they get a hold of you? Yeah, I can type. I, should I type my? Uh, maybe I can type my uh, BJ at getdistinct.com, but distinct is, is spelled with a Y. I can type that in the in the chat. Make sure that so folks can see that come. You know, I think I think the thing is, as we think about, you know, our our solution, right? Our our target market initially here is the U.S. swine industry, but I think I think this kind of the solution is relevant for all you know animals that are raised in a confined space all across all across the world and and i think we're asking these kind of these same kind of questions and i would say as you know obviously connections and contacts are really important you know if they, if you're intro to producers or you know producers who are who are tired of point solutions right of single solution offering that only addresses one of these needs you know maybe maybe it only addresses that feed need or maybe it only addresses manure pits or maybe it only addresses temperature you know our our solution is is really the foundation we're the we're, we're completely agnostic we connect you know we're not egotistical enough to think that it's only going to be our devices that'll need connectivity and that we'll bring every single device that a that a livestock producer connects so any introductions to producers you know i, I also think it's like where do you need remote visibility where are you trying to monitor something you know i, I think that's another key piece is Thinking just, of course, in the context of livestock producers, but where are those other where are those other points where we need remote visibility, and and what questions are you answering manually today that you think sensor technology 
could replace. You know, that was an easy the example with the manure pit monitoring. Gosh, going around site to site, measuring with a broken broom handle, like dipping your, dipping that into the pit and measuring like the the well, it's not a, really a water line, the the liquid line. You know, on on that on that broom handle, it's like where what are those things? There are a lot of those things. And, you know, even in like understanding from a sustainability from a carbon standpoint, what are those measures? Are you trying to monitor electrical consumption? You're trying to monitor a propane use? You're trying to monitor water consumption or manure generation, all those things like what are you monitoring manually that you that you would love to monitor electronically? I think just thinking about those things and, and any of those connections would be important to us too. Terrific. Well, BJ, thanks so much for joining us. To our audience, thank you for joining us. As a reminder, we host these agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. So if you want to share this with we welcome you to do so. They can register on agrifoodconversations.com. They can have access to the hundreds of other conversations we've had over the last few years. And then a replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. So if you're interested in swine tech, as I assume you are since you're here, join us next week. We'll be joined by Matthew Ruda, co-founder and CEO of Swine Tech, which is a company working on becoming the eyes and ears for pork producers, as they put it, enabling them to offer an exceptional, exceptional quality of life for the pigs in their care. And so that will be an interesting discussion as well. So again, BJ, thank you so much for joining us. And to everyone else, have a great rest of your afternoon.